as we resume, I'm assuming that you took some time between the two videos to look through these pages yourself and get some uh, thoughts about their design. So, or maybe you even, when you went through that, you even looked at the, the checklist and sort of thought about this through the pages. Or maybe you even tried opening them up in other browsers. I'm just going to go to each one of the pages and point out a few um, elements. So, starting out with this one, this is actually the best designed uh, page of, of all of the, the choices that, that I've given you. So it gives an idea of you know, good design. One of the first things we sort of notice from this is I am flooded with the imagery of landscapes looking at the, the page. From the, our background image and of conveying this landscape design, the logo conveying this tree within the T, and a large image kind of dominating the page of a landscape. When we think about the target audience for this page, they are obviously trying to attract clients. And having this very visual indicator of what they provide allows somebody to see, oh, I want my yard to look like that. Also notice in the footer of this page, we see vital information, how to contact them. Again, it's up here. So while I'm scrolling through this page, if I decide that I want to contact them, you know, I have no problem finding their contact information. If you've scrolled through this page, you've seen that, you know, the visual indicators continue consistently throughout the site. Now, I have had some people uh, feel that some of this text is difficult to read with the uh, semi-transparency of the background, you know, where I can actually see some of the background image behind this. Uh, this is on the home page as well. If you're actually looking through this, you start to see um, you know, there's, there's a degree of transparency going on here, and, and I have had some people say that they find that to be difficult to read, that they prefer this larger text that's a little bit stronger than text like the captions on my images, for example. Uh, but what I wanted to pull away from this site was just this overwhelming um, attraction to the audience, exactly what they want to see. They want to envision uh, landscapes in order to accomplish their, their goals here. The Home tab is something that is kind of fading out in terms of design. All of these pages that we're looking at have actually been up for, for several years. Uh, but typically, users actually know or um, just to click on the, the logo or banner to return home. And they don't actually need a link that, that says home. As you're navigating through sites just through your everyday life and you come across um, sites that are newer, um, you might notice that the home tab has disappeared, that we um, click on the logo, which actually does work on this site, to return home. Another thing I want to point out with this is there's a little bit of inconsistency with the names of the tabs. Even though this site is extremely well designed, we should be thinking about consistency of grammar and tense. For instance, if it's about us, it should also be contact us. Now, so we might have wanted to think about if we were designing this page using the tab to just say about or keeping all of our tabs to, you know, the same amount of words or the same length. So have a little bit of consistency there. So as far as our characteristics of design, this page isn't perfect, but it's very close. And it's also, um, you know, the site has been published for some time. So design characteristics change. And some of these other websites we'll look at, at the time that they were published, that was actually considered good design, and it isn't today. So a lot of these characteristics are evolving. Let's look at the second page. So this page uses a lot of 
movement, not just with the image gallery here. As we are uh, moving through the pages, they continue to kind of swipe. You know, the movement can be distracting. It can be difficult to um, work with for accessibility purposes. This was also done um, through JavaScripting which, you know, if, if somebody has turned that off or not supporting that, they could have a potential problem with the content. So that's just something to be aware of. Maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you feel like this sort of movement, having this, is more important than, you know, losing some uh, particular users. This I also wanted to take a look at, this change in text. And I understand what they're trying to do here, which is to further emphasize as they're moving down, that these are really three points, and they want to kind of further emphasize that. So the, the idea that they're really stressing here is their company. Um, but it does kind of make things difficult to read, and we do want to think about contrast. Similar to the idea of looking at that white text through the semi-transparent background of the site that we just looked at, this light gray on the white background is a low contrast situation, which does make it um, you know, more difficult for users to read. But they still have a number of good things going for them. There's consistency. The navigation is always up here. Always see my logo. The footer. Ooh. Wow, the footer's missing from this page. Um, most of the pages have the footer with this information. So clearly we want um, our website to have, I just wanted to see. Oh, the footer's changed here too. Wow, I didn't notice that before. I thought this was maybe because I was just looking at the first few. But we, the footer is one of those areas that should be consistent throughout the, the site. And we also have the situation with the home link. And on this page, the logo does not link home. So I would suggest removing this. I would have suggested removing the us from contact. Uh, but even if I was going to keep the home link, I would still have made this, made the logo itself or banner link to that home page. Because if you start thinking about, now that we've talked about this, websites, just while you're going through your everyday life, you'll start to notice that you do that, click on the banner or logo to return home, and, and you don't even think about the fact that you're, you're doing it. So we certainly would want to keep that functionality. When we go to the next page, I want to first start out by just looking at the tab. Notice it says Home here. The reason that we add these titles to our page is to make it easy for us to navigate. For instance, if I wanted to go back to our, our good design checklist from the textbook, I know it's right here. That's our author's name. It's right here. That's where I'm going to find the, the checklist. This doesn't really tell me much. Home. You know, home of, of what page? What tab do I have open? And tabbed browsing is very popular. So we might have wanted to, to think about that. Also, as we change pages, this should change, but it changes with some inconsistency. So we had home, we had services in capital letters, license and insurance not um, capitalized. It's in title case. There's some um, JavaScripting going on with this page. I'm just going to ignore that. But let's go back to the home page. One of the first things that should stick out for us is that this page was designed for a smaller resolution. This is obviously an older page. I have a very large monitor. I know in some ways with the video it's probably kind of frustrating to see um, that length, you know, the, the horizontal length of the, the screen. This is more likely the size that this page was designed for. And now the layout makes a little bit more sense looking at it here. However, one of the things that's apparent here, as well as apparent when it was larger, was that we want to get the most important content, you know, above the fold, so to speak. I don't know if um, you've heard that phrase before when people talk about 
being in the newspaper, having an article in the newspaper, and you want it to be above the fold, you know, on the, the top portion of the page. Our important information needs to be on the top, and we are wasting, or this page is wasting a lot of this top space with images that are really unnecessary or could be located elsewhere with all of this going on and the spacing. It's just a, a large waste of, of space when we should eliminate some of this scrolling a little bit more uh, user-friendly. I shouldn't have to scroll for navigation, not left sidebar navigation. You might have a right sidebar down this side with external links to other sites and we might need to scroll for that, but our main navigation through the page, we should not have to um, use vertical scrolling to get to all of the, the main navigation. This area here, too, the game. Um, this is not valuable content. This is not even related to landscaping. This is not something that I expect to see when I go to the landscaping when I go to a landscaping company. I want to see what they could do to my yard, maybe their prices, maybe um, you know this agreement or the fact that they have insurance or whatnot. Those are things that I want to see. This is not at all something that I would expect to see on on a landscaping uh, page. We also have this animated GIF going on, which is very distracting. I I know I tell the story a lot, but I um, sorry, I was trying to get away from that the calculator there. Um, I used to show a page that had this animated GIF going along the bottom. It was a cat, sort of just running along the bottom of the page, um, and. It, it's so distracting that, you know, I even, trying to teach the class, was getting so distracted by this cat that I couldn't even talk. Nobody was listening. We were all looking at the cat. You know, and this is extremely distracting. And when we incorporate our animations, we'll look at maybe just letting it run once or limiting where it is. Uh, as opposed to having that consistent area. You know, certainly we understand they want you to apply for a quote. So they have your phone number and they can get in touch with you about services and get, you know, um, you know, speak to the audience directly. But it's also extremely distracting to continue to see this. And as we're reading pages with more content, we see, you know, these gifts and it's just, am I reading through this or am I getting distracted by the little, um, by the sun, wishing that it was a little warmer out. Before we depart from this page, the site, excuse me, I want to look at one last area, the gallery. So this is a thumbnail image where I could click to look at a larger resolution and then only um, look at it if I'm actually interested. So if I'm not interested in seeing this picture, for example, I don't need to download that, which previously this was really important because of dial-up internet connections and the slow connection speed. But now that importance is resuming because somebody on their mobile phone doesn't want to download your you know, gigantic image when they're just going to the website to find your contact information or hours or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And we'll see another problem, which is, how do I get back? There should be a link on the page itself, in the borders of the page here, for me to return to the page I was previously on. Users should not need to use the back and forward buttons to navigate the site. Should always have complete and consistent navigation. We should also avoid under construction areas. If the page is under construction or not finished, we should either remove this or we should just not upload that page. Wait until the page is finished and complete before we would, you know, put it online. So we've seen a number of um, design items here. I think we've taken a lot away from this particular uh, page, but there was a time when some of this was 
considered to be more favorable than we do now. If we were looking at this page, um, you know, 10 years ago, we probably wouldn't have had as much to critique here. And there's certainly more to critique on the page too, but I'm going to go ahead and, and end there and just bring us to the next next page. So on this site, we do see consistency in navigation. But one of the first things that sticks out to me is this was green, this was green, this was green, and this page is orange. So all of these landscaping cages have been predominantly green. And actually, as we go on, we see some of the green coming back. But this page doesn't have uh, that component. So reaching the audience through the visual indicator is not there. I also kept the screen size smaller here because this is another one of those pages that was obviously designed for a lower resolution. But fortunately, it is a liquid layout, which means that things are resizing as the size of my browser changes. So we'll go ahead and keep it a little smaller. And we'll look through the navigation. I would have said the same thing about the Home tab. I would have suggested either this say Our Services to be consistent with About Us and Contact Us, or that we just drop the two us's. So we have consistency of text, uh, of tense, um, and grammar through our navigation. So notice there's a rollover link here. It's a little probably subtle on the video, but as I navigate through these, uh, I am seeing the black indicator from the brown showing me what I'm on. This is a great feature um, for websites where somebody's looking on their desktop. You see on a mobile device, the rollover becomes useless. We're not kind of rolling over on a touch screen. But, um, but for this, for a desktop machine, this is very useful because it tells someone, especially someone with limited hand agility, you know, exactly where they are, what they're going to be, um, to be clicking on, what page they're going to go to. I find, oops, I'm sorry, I was already here. I didn't realize I was. I find that these pages are lacking content. There's a lot more that I would want to know about them than I see here. So I think that could have been facilitated some. Also, as we look through the site, and it's small, so we can look through it again, there's no real image of what they provide. And landscaping services is something that is extremely visual. And the only image I have here is hopefully not related to this page because they're talking about lawn maintenance. I'm thinking about things like getting my grass cut, not about you know farming. So that's something that you might want to or that you definitely would want to, to think about as well. So we've looked at a few poor designed pages. We're coming back to a, um, a little bit better design. Some people might think that this is a little bit busy, but it's certainly a, a better design. This design has is facilitates um, using a touch screen a little bit better in that our icons are larger than we would have expected on a desktop. If you go back to, I think it was, hmm, let me pause the video. This is what I was looking for. Not the best idea for a touch screen, you know, what they call the fat finger syndrome, that we need a little more space and room to make sure that we're really clicking on Facebook and not blog or Twitter. So this page helps facilitate that. They even, you know, I can call on my phone from here. I see much larger um, navigation, which is certainly where things are going today. We could look at this page more, but the only other thing that I want to point out is that there's text down here, and when I'm navigating through the page, I actually would not necessarily even move down 
to the bottom of the page because it looks like everything is complete before I even get there. Almost like this is a little bit of an afterthought because we even have this visual border. It fades, the gradient fades down and we kind of encapsulate it with this border so we have a very well framed area here and so we wouldn't necessarily think that there's even more information down here. So there may have been a better way to handle this. Maybe having a link here that would open up a pop-up with that text, for instance, if somebody wanted more of a text description of, of that. And we also even have that consistency of this area, which to me comes across as a footer on first glance. It's not the footer. There's a footer down here. But this, particularly its consistency as I go through the pages, notice that is staying the same, staying the same, gives me the idea that, that this is actually my footer. So one way, I, I mean, I'm sure that they want to get you to fill out the form, um, but maybe this could have been brought down into the footer and integrated with the existing footer, and someone would be more likely to have read that text, or maybe there could have been a link around here for a, for a pop-up with this, this text. Let's look at the next page. This is actually our last page to look at. This is an older design as well. It's only a few pages here, so we can certainly look through them. But this, in particular, is uh, can be a little bit frustrating that I need to uh, watch the images, uh, so that's something that you might want to to think about because on first glance, it's the time in between it and this need to wait for the next image to flip and no visual indicator that there are more images to come might have made me actually leave the page before I continue to look. Let's say we're here, we look at the gallery, we think, oh, there's nothing there, and we move, and we moved before you know, we could move before it had ever, ever clicked. So that might be something that we'd want to, to think about. This page also has issues with content. I am probably expecting to see a little bit more, such as a list of the services they provide, maybe their experience or references or prices even. So there's just, there's not a lot of content here. Um, and some of the content is repeated. These are actually in my gallery, but yet they're here as well, which makes me feel like I haven't even changed pages because of that, that repetition in information. It almost seems like everything on this web page, website excuse me, could have been consolidated to a single page. But there is something of value here that I want to look at. I'm actually going to need to resize my window a little bit for this so that you can see it in the video. When you have graphics serving as your links, it's great to also include text links at the bottom of the page for accessibility. So this was a great move for that, for the accessibility purpose of I have these graphics with their rollover effect, but I also, for somebody that might be using a screen reader or the graphics might not display, have the text links at the bottom of the page. Another benefit to this is if this page had more content and was longer, I would not have to scroll all the way up to navigate. Our page here has something similar to that. Down here they have what's called an anchor link that jumps me to the top of the page so that I didn't have to go through you know, excessive scrolling to find the navigation. So I'm going to end the video now. You know, certainly, you know, we don't have the time to go into all of these pages to the extent that uh, would really give them a thorough critique, but there were a lot of pages to look at, and I just wanted to point out a few of those elements. You should certainly look at the checklist, uh, go through that chapter three in your red book, or start to look at the layout and design portions in the web style guide that I link to under the project tab uh, on Blackboard. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and end the, the conversation now.